Hello and welcome to I Talk to Ghosts, the podcast that loves it when the weather begins to match the mood. (sighs) Here we are in the first couple of days of autumn, dear listener. I love it. I'm Jennifer, your host and a professional medium, and tonight I have some ghost stories to read to you. And with this being spooky season, I indeed want to keep things spooky. Let's cover a topic that I can't believe I truly haven't talked about it yet. Poltergeists. I've shared stories of airports, objects that disappear and reappear. I believe that was in episode 13. But I've never covered stories of entities that move objects, in most cases, move them quite violently. I find this phenomenon at the top of my list of most startling with the paranormal, and I've actually witnessed it a few times myself. I'll talk about that briefly at the end of the episode. Also tonight, I have a new in-studio medium reading to share with you so I can demonstrate my work as a medium, as well as please gather with me at my seance table for a message from the spirits. I dedicate this time for a missive to come through from spirit to a listener, so see if this one is for you. That's later on in the podcast. But first, it's time to be moved. The poltergeists are materializing right now. This is taking place in my home currently, and I don't know why it started, but it has all the characteristics of a poltergeist experience. It started in February, if I remember correctly. I'm a single mom of two teenage daughters. It was a weekend and I was up late working on a report that was due at work the next day when I heard my 15-year-old daughter scream. I hurried into her bedroom where I found her room a mess. Most of her books had been strewn about and she was cowering under her bed. She was crying and grabbing my arm to drag me under the bed with her. You can't help but be terrified yourself when you see your child scared like that. I frantically looked around her room for a reason for all of this. She told me she had been sleeping when something started throwing her books across the room. I believe her. I happen to have many ghost stories from my own past. I let her sleep in my room that night. I had hoped... This was an isolated incident, but it was only the first of many more. The next happening took place the very next evening. Both of my daughters had gone out for the night and I had the house to myself. I was sitting on the couch reading when something started moving about and making noise in the kitchen. I heard glass breaking as if items were being thrown and shattered. When the noise stopped, hesitantly, I went into the kitchen to investigate. There had been three glass bowls out on the countertop, and what I heard was each of them violently falling to the floor. I resigned myself to clean up the mess and tried not to show how afraid I was, just in case something was watching. I feel as if I'm in the middle of a horror movie with all these random things happening. And now, the whispers have started. We all randomly hear our names being whispered in our ear, or an occasional phrase or sentence we can't make out. We are all very scared. Last week, things had calmed down a little, and again, I hoped the worst was over, but I was wrong. My older daughter fell down while walking in the hallway. She kept insisting that someone had tripped her. I didn't consider this paranormal at the time, but the next day, it happened to me. It was afternoon tea time for me, and as I made my way into my study, I could subtly feel something against my shin, 
and I tripped over seemingly nothing. My hot tea spilled all over me, and it hurt. I couldn't handle it anymore, and we decided to go stay at my mother's place for a few days. When we returned, things had calmed down just as quickly as they had started. The physical manifestation stopped, no tripping me or my daughters, no throwing things around. It just stopped. However, the whispers and the noises continue and still happen, however with less frequency. There are random noises in the middle of the night or even in broad daylight, but we're just so on edge now, it's hard to tell if it's just overthinking. Even as I write this, there's a loud noise coming from my kitchen. But I think I'm fairly used to it now. I think my house has a poltergeist. Lights turn on and off. Items fly off the shelves and counters. One time, when I was home at night by myself, I saw something move out of the corner of my eye. I looked over, and I saw that the scarf I had draped over the top of my bathroom door, the bottom half of it, was suspended at a 20-degree angle including the tassels, in mid-air. At this point, so many things were happening in my apartment, including physical welts down my back, that I was terrified to be home. I ended up getting dressed and going outside the building before I broke down crying, and I called my grandmother to come pick me up. A different time, My friend and I were outside talking when we heard what sounded like someone completely trashing my apartment. I'm talking chairs being smashed into walls, shelves being tipped over. I was actually the only person living in the building at the time, and we raced up the stairs to catch whoever it was. But not a single thing was moved in my apartment, and all the other units were locked. When we first moved in, everyone hated coming to our building. They said it felt off. My ex and I never felt that way at first and thought everyone was exaggerating. But by the time I moved, I wouldn't speak about ghosts or watch anything remotely paranormal in my apartment. Years later, I watched the movie Paranormal Activity at a friend's house, and I cannot describe the chill I felt. Similar things have been happening in my own home. Thankfully, I haven't experienced anything like it since I moved. This experience happened to me when I was home by myself. My parents and siblings had gone out of town and they wouldn't be back until about 11 o'clock that night. I was 16, home alone on a Friday night. My mom had bought me snacks, soda, and left me money for pizza. I had a new video game, and Monday was a holiday. Yes, my life was perfect at that moment. At around seven o'clock, I had just ordered my pizza and I was in the kitchen pouring myself a soda. I poured my drink and I closed the fridge. As I was walking back to the living room, I heard the sink in the bathroom turn on. I froze. The bathroom was right next to the kitchen, so when I turned to look, I saw that the bathroom light was also on, and against my better judgment, I went to investigate. Upon walking in, I saw both the faucets were turned fully on water pouring into the sink. 
I wasn't as much scared as I was just confused. Shaking it off, I turned off the water and the light and went to the living room to wait for pizza. Around 8.30, I was sitting in the living room watching TV and hating my life because I had eaten an entire large pizza in about 11 minutes when I heard a crashing sound coming from our computer room. I jumped up, heart racing, to have a look. It turned out that some boxes that were stacked in the corner had fallen and were now strewn across the room. Naturally, I just assumed they weren't stacked properly and just fell, so I restacked them and I went back to watching TV. About three minutes later, I heard another crashing sound come once more from our computer room. I thought it must be those damn boxes. I go back only to find that a stack of CDs that I had sitting on the back of the shelf had been thrown across the room. This really creeped me out. I decided to shut myself in the room with the lights on and wait for my family to get home. But the ghost wasn't done with me yet. For context, my older sister's room was next to mine, so we share a wall. We've always been close, so it was common for her to knock on the wall with three sharp raps to tell me to come see her for something. You may see where this is going. I was lying on my bed, playing my PSP, when suddenly I heard three sharp raps on the wall. Not really thinking, I naturally got up to see what my sister wanted. As I opened my door, it hit me that she wasn't home. But I knew what I heard. Then a new idea dawned on me. She hadn't gone with our parents. She had stayed home and was messing with me. Her door was shut, so I flung it open to yell at her. She wasn't there. I still wasn't convinced she wasn't home, so I decided to check the entire house. The house is only a three-bedroom, two-bath, and it was built in 1918, so it's pretty small by today's standards. I checked every room and closet. I even comically looked into the cabinets and the washing machine. Finding nothing, I went back to my room until I heard my family coming home. First thing my mom asked me was, how was it being home alone for so long? And I replied, creepy. Of course she thinks it was because it was so quiet and that I had no one to talk to. I tell her, no, I mean like weird stuff happening. Then she asked me, what kind of weird stuff? So I said, well, the bathroom light and the sink turned on by themselves. And it shocked me when she got upset and told me to be quiet. Her exact words were, Don't! Don't even! Don't even say that! It was years ago that stuff started happening and I don't need it starting again. My mom was clearly holding out on me. <laughs> this was one of the most profound experiences I had in that house. Although there are some strange things that occasionally happen in my house, flickering lights, the kettle coming on for no reason, and phantom footsteps at night, I just dismiss these things with rational explanations like faulty electronics or an overactive imagination on my part. What happened to me last week truly freaked me out. Last Saturday, my mother, father, and I had been out all day, and we had come home quite late. On returning home, I went into my bedroom and was horrified by what I saw. My floor was covered in broken glass and bits of porcelain. A glass bowl and a vase that had been on my window ledge had fallen onto the floor and smashed all over the carpet. It actually looked like my room had been vandalized. The shock of the sight nearly made my heart stop. 
I know some of you will be saying to yourself, the objects must have just fallen off the window ledge. I would have thought the same, but here are some of the things to think about and take into account. The window was closed, so there would not have been any gust of wind to blow over the objects. The bowl and the vase had not been placed at the edge of the window ledge to be able to fall off. My curtains had been closed How could these things have fallen through my thick, closed curtains? My bed is situated between the window ledge and the floor, so everything had to have fallen past my bed onto the floor. Finally, my things had been smashed so badly, they just look as if they've been purposefully thrown. My whole room, which is quite big, was covered in fragments of glass and porcelain. It took me ages to clean up the mess, finding every single little piece that had been strewn across the room. As I said before, there were definitely no other people in the house, and we didn't have a break-in. It all has been puzzling to me ever since it happened. The only other explanation that crossed my mind was possibly poltergeist activity the phenomenon in which objects move on their own accord. Our house has never experienced this type of thing before. I had told my friend and she joked that maybe our house was haunted. I must admit that sometimes I do feel uncomfortable in the house for no reason, as if there's some type of presence or just a feeling of not belonging. I also get a creepy feeling from time to time before going to bed. Apart from this though, I've never witnessed any objects moving on their own. Hey, something new. You probably know my medium work by now, but did you know I also love to provide tarot readings as well? I absolutely love the messages the cards can offer of affirmation, inspiration, and guidance. If you are feeling called to see what messages are waiting for you, visit italktoghost.com to book a reading with me. I can't wait to meet you. Hello and welcome back to I Talk to Ghosts. My guest this evening is Margaret. Margaret, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing this evening? Doing doing very well. Yep, very happy to be here. Wonderful. I'm so glad to talk to you. And I want to say again, because I talked to you and your mother a couple of weeks ago. She had a reading. And uh, so this is kind of round two as we go. (laughs) Um, As I was opening up the space, I got a big flood of love coming in for you. It feels like multiple people surrounding you. Um, Love from your father, but, and like, I want you to know he's, he is there for you still. Um, But there is a woman coming through with a lot of like fun energy. And um, she she almost feels like um, she could drag you anywhere. You know, it, it feels like an aunt or a godmother or something somewhere mm-hmm. along those lines. Does that connect for you at all? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see a purse on her arm. Um, I'm hearing something like a. It sounds like dice or something in a cup. Like, is it Yahtzee that, um... Oh, no. is, yeah. It, is the, um, yeah, so so my mom, Liz, is right next to me. So I'm going to ask her real quick. Would that be Aunt Liz with dice? Maybe. I don't know, but it could be. Yeah. yeah. But, but she played games that involved dice. Not so much? Not so much? Okay. Not so much. All right. Okay. Let's talk about Okay, then I'm getting a bunch of little details, like there's talk of like helping with the dishes or wanting you to help with the dishes. 
Um, I'm seeing like a lot of soap suds in the sink and, um, her making like a special holiday dish or something like that, that she was kind of known for. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It might be my grandma, <laughs> my paternal grandmother. Okay. Mm-hmm. She had a special dish that she would make. It was a wild rice dish, like a hot dish. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can connect these dots here or if my signals are getting crossed. Was she a bit of a happy person, like like to laugh, like to yes. joke? Yes, okay. very much so. Okay. Um, why is she... She wasn't saying... And like, this is me just trying to figure it out. She wasn't saying grandmother so much to me. It feels like there was either a larger role in her relationship with you or perhaps she was the type of person who didn't quite see herself just as a grandmother. Um, can you f- fill this in for me a little bit? Or does that not make sense? You um, Asking my mom real quick, do you, do you think that could be her still? I, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my mom says, yeah, that could be true. Of okay. Grandma Lane, yeah. She likes to think of herself as a young person. So yeah. grandma, she always didn't appreciate being called grandma okay okay yeah because she is kind of coming in as younger and kind of vibrant just had a lot of energy and i'm sure she had a lot of energy in her youth and then she just really kind of retained that through her life probably yes <laughs> yeah she's okay. she was a very bubbly personality mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and it feels like it it all right you did visit her at her house but it also feels like she would go out she wanted to go out and do things and like Mm -hmm. like (laughs) yeah Yeah. okay yeah that's that's the um dragging me everywhere type of energy that i'm getting like let's go do this let's go do that i've got my purse on my arm and i'm ready to go (laughs) that sounds accurate okay all right so all right yeah. Okay. I'm just, it's funny. Cause I'm, I was just feeling a little thrown cause it felt like, yeah, she, she just didn't want to be called grandmother. Interesting. Not that she didn't, you didn't, not that she didn't love being your grandmother. She just, she's like, I am this person. I, I have this energy. I, uh, I want to joke around. I'm laughing. I kind of even see her, um, throwing her head back as she's laughing. Like she's laughing so much. Yes. <laughs> that makes, yes. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, she's definitely here. Let me see. Um, oh. Um, do you, all right, let me just clarify, just in case um someone missed it. Your mom, Liz, is here with us too. She's kind of sitting beside you. Um and Liz was was this your mother? No. It was my husband's mother. Husband's mother. Yeah. Okay. Did, did you happen do you happen to know if she enjoyed dancing when she was younger? Yes, and, she did. Okay. She did. And I don't think that kind of ever left her. I'm seeing her kind of as she's talking, kind of doing a little shoulder shake or a little uh, <laughs> shuffle, you know? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yes. <laughs> that would definitely be something she would. <laughs> okay. And um I'm feeling like there's something in her hand. Did did she smoke at all? In her younger years, she did, yes. Okay. It was like, let me take my pen and kind of demonstrate. She's just like, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> um and is there I might be switching gears a little bit, but I'm also feeling kind of a, a music influence in in your family um it does that connect with her or is that someone else because the way i work it's kind of like oh we're talking about dancing and then all of a sudden we're flowing into this other topic and this this other passion about um yeah what kind of music (sighs) good question it it feels kind of loud it i want to say drums like big beat 
to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's big band or something. She did like music of the big band era. Okay, so she did like big band music. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. Yeah, she did. <laughs> okay. I think she liked to blast it. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes>, no. <laughs> is what's going on. Like turn it up, just turn it up loud. And she just really uh appreciated feeling it. You know, how music can vibrate in your body. Um she's like, Yes, now it is going on. And um <laughs> Yeah, I just want to pass that along. It's something that she's sharing. Okay. Um, let me circle back to the dice thing. Was that something that we connected or not? Uh, no, I attempted to with someone else, but it possibly okay. is Grandma Lane still. Oh, okay. Um, Liz, can you think of uh, Grandma Lane playing a game with dice or but I've heard her talk a lot about with her siblings as adults that they would play games. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's possibly in there somewhere. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good to know. I just I like to um tidy up those threads when I can while I'm sure. thinking about it. Cause like I could sometimes I go a mile a minute and you just never <laughs> it's like <laughs> Get to it while I remember it. You know what I mean? Sure. Totally. Okay. Okay. Let me jump all over the place. Okay. Easter. Easter is kind of coming up. Um, and there seems to be a little bit of a joke about uh, a chocolate bunny. Was there someone in your family who would, like, bite the ears off of the chocolate bunny? Doesn't everyone? <laughs> no, but Easter was a big deal, our family. Mm-hmm. It was with my mother, right. usually, yeah. okay. until she passed. Okay, so maybe she's coming in, because it, it's just funny. That's like, I'm like, okay, fur coat, and then, no, let's talk about Easter and, and chocolate rabbits. And I'm seeing this Easter chocolate rabbit with, you know, how sometimes they had the candy eye that was, like, really big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what, kind of what I'm seeing um, let me see if I can get other grandmother to come close um, with other grandmother Liz's mom um, did she have a little bit of a, a stern side to her there's something about rules and thoughts and things like that yeah she could yeah I wouldn't describe it as stern I would just yeah. describe it like she wasn't so if Elaine was the giggly mm-hmm. loose grandmother figure right uh mm-hmm. grandma Flo was very I don't know just you know more down to earth down to earth yeah she she didn't really <laughs> giggle and flutter about. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in comparison, jumping ships here, right? Yes, it can, yeah. it can, it, it's like um, stepping off the people mover a little bit. And you're like, yes. whoa. They're, um, they're very different people. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, thoughtful woman. Very. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, she was in her own head a lot. And like, I... I, I am accused of this sometimes too, where when I'm thinking you kind of got the, you know, the resting bee face, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so that's why I'm seeing with her just the, hmm, um, as she's thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's genetic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me, did she pass rather quickly? She did. Um, um, yeah, she did. I mean, mom can speak more to this, but she was, I think she was sure. in the hospital for six weeks. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it feels like, um, but before that, she was okay? Yeah, she seemed yeah. to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's kind of expressing the sentiment of she wishes she had prepared better. Mm-hmm. Um, did you, did she leave it kind of in a bit of a, up in the air, all of her arrangements and and what should be done and things like that? Well, she did because it was very unexpected, you okay. know, so, you know. Things were left in the kitchen on the table, like she left them and oh, all that, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She wants to express, um, 
just acknowledge the sadness that that caused um and that hurt and and she just wants to just kind of acknowledge gosh things happen so fast and then you having to deal with the aftermath and yeah and things being on the table and th that just leaves us so much more vulnerable feeling you know that hurts and and mm -hmm. and she just wants to acknowledge that um that all of that happened and she given the opportunity she wants to give you that comfort and and um she doesn't want you to think of her that way you know mm. it when something startling happens it it tends to have an emphasis in our thoughts and and she's sorry that the situation placed that there. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Okay. She's giving me a bit of a sentiment of... I don't know if you were aware of this or not. Um, she had an underlying frustration in life for not being able to do something. Maybe she wanted to like mm -hmm. travel or, or be something or do something and felt like she just couldn't and if she ever felt frustrated or a little bit reserved or even like she didn't have as much patience as she could have there was just a lot of underlying things that kind of influenced her personality a little bit does that make sense yes it definitely does she did have some bumps in the road along the way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's just agreeing that it was hard. And <laughs> she's she's kind of joking about it a little bit that it's like, well, hard things happen and that's why we have hard people and that's how you are. You're just hard after <laughs> <laughs> after that like she wasn't the only one you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> does that make sense it does yes it does um it, yeah she just had some disappointments you know in her marriage and and mm -hmm. when she was younger she wanted to go to college and her sisters did but she didn't get to because her mother became ill and she had to take care of her and just things like that along yeah the way uh, with yeah. disappointments okay with that um margaret yeah she's pouring all this enthusiasm over to you about you make sure you do all the things you want to do <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, but but no but she's she's also acknowledging that she sees you and that you are your own person and you got this that you're good i hope you can feel that in yourself yeah yeah most days i do <laughs> <laughs> well we all have most our days, off days okay let me see um i want to open this up for you right now um was there anyone you were hoping to hear from tonight um let's see here um love that uh grandma Flo came through that was like biggie um mm -hmm. uh i do have a couple pets in mind and uh -huh. um and another human so i don't know if you I want to go the human route or the <laughs> the pet route do you um, have a preference or not really um well I am feeling some cats. Are are there cats? Yes, there are definitely there are definitely cats. <laughs> One of them were they kind of like a little bit more wild in a personality? Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah the two that I have in mind. There's one that's definitely a wilder personality. Okay, mm -hmm. the, they're they're coming through like um, yeah. It's almost like you got to watch out because. It, Pr like almost prankster energy or yes, like very gonna, much get so. you, gonna get you yes um, very much so all right 
they're almost joking, like, still going to get you. <laughs> <Good. laughs> um, that makes me happy. With this cat, I, I see them drinking. Did you ever give them something special, like milk or something like that? Something different than just water? Because it, it feels like there's some special treat. No, but I, I mean, you know, uh, mix the food and the water, that kind of thing, you okay. know, just for maintenance and make sure he gets the water intake. So, okay. Yeah. So not like a special so, beverage, but that's how I prep his food. Yeah. There, there seems to be a little emphasis. And then this is just me sorting this out in my head um, of additional. It wasn't just um, food and water. Bowl. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He'd lick his bowl clean, so he loved it. So I'm, I'm, you know, he could see it as a treat or something, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe that just really um, was that extra special factor for him <laughs> that really made him enjoy it. You know, Good. would he like hide and jump out or yes. get you as you went past? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he'd slap my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what a sweetheart. Yeah, he was so he was so much fun. He, yeah, he very sweet, affectionate. Like it like I can you can scoop him up, you yes. know, and and it's like, oh yeah. You know, yes. it wasn't like <laughs> it it was like, whoa, well, yes, this is amazing. It wasn't like, no, get away. I gotta I gotta <laughs> I gotta be the vulture. I gotta be sneaky over here and stoic yeah. until I gotcha. You know, it was yeah, yeah. very, very lovey, very Mm-hmm. He's social okay. kitty. Very social. Oh, what a sweetie. Okay. Um was there a I'm kinda hearing a little bell noise or something, a little a tinkling of something. Was there either a toy or something like Lots that? Lots of that toys. Moved? He for a short period, he wore a collar with like little charms on it. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's the collar, that little kind of how they can kind of tinkle a little bit. Um, yeah. This guy, he just wants to reiterate that he was the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is my number one, as so much as that pains me to say. <laughs> oh. um, I love him <laughs> Yeah. Um, like, he was king. Like, yeah. he's king of the cats. He is king yeah. of the cats. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, other cat. Other cat. This cat is coming in a lot more demure. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a good word for Feels her. like <laughs> demure. <laughs> Very demure. <laughs> Very mindful. Yeah. Uh, she. <laughs> Not just trendy, um, but accurate. <laughs> yeah, right. You're right. She started it. She is the original, um, just so everyone knows. Um, <laughs> did she like to look out the window? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and like that was her spot and her place. And like, you, you know, again, another sweet kid. Um, but this feels more on her terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She yeah. was, okay. yeah, she was, um, she was open to girls and women being with her but she Uh when it was men she wasn't so um acceptable of touch or anything like that so she wasn't yeah and we never could figure that out but she just didn't like men (laughs) you know but yeah Yeah, because it's sisters and so we got along great (laughs) it feels like that's just part of her kind of princess persona Uh like i i'm I am a girl. I want to be around the girly girls. I want to be around the girls. Um, And anyone else, it's kind of like, who is that? Yeah. Why are they here? (laughs) Yeah, Dan was always kind of offended by her. Uh, Yeah, yeah, you're like, get over it. She's like, (laughs) right? Like, yeah, 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 you're being judged, but it's okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Judgment in small packages. Yeah. Um she's feeling like a very pretty cat too. It was very, very pretty. Yeah. Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous girl. And yeah. Wow. 
talk about two different personalities. But, you know, she, she wants to acknowledge that you helped her in some way. I hope so. Well, it feels like um, at the beginning of her life and mm. at the end, like mm. how you got her. Oh, she was a rescue. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. she's saying, she... okay, the the way I feel animal energy and how it works, because um, like the first time I ever did like a pet rating, I'm like, how is this going to work? They don't know English. Um, but I, I don't think I communicate with spirit in written language anyway. Um, and I do always get the feeling that when a pet passes over, they gain this clarity and this expansiveness, uh, and awareness of the world around them. And then they can see their whole life just like we can and be like, Oh, look at, look at where it started and where it ended and all in between. And there's this feeling of gratitude for, wow, you, you changed my life for the better. Mm -hmm. And because of you, um, I had this life that I loved and cherished and felt pampered in. Oh, that's so and, good. Yeah. And no. she feel she just feels like you were always there for her every step of the way and never, oh. ever, ever, ever doubt that. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if I could ask a question. Um, sure. But, you know, so she passed, you know, she, well, she was ill for a while, but, you know, she mm. decided to pass, like, on her own in, like, this wet, mm. damp corner in the basement. And, you know, we found her, you know, one morning. And I know part of that is instinct, but also I'm just curious, you know, I don't know why she would why? choose that spot of all the why? places she could have chosen. We were just heartbroken when we found her. The, okay, this is this is what is coming through for me. She was a little disoriented, mm -hmm. and also she felt she felt this. It's like this calling of nature to get out and yes. go and be alone and and just right. in that kind of urge to um pass away yeah. away yeah um but also in feeling a little disoriented and just kind of it's like well i'm losing i'm losing my um my time window here mm -hmm. and i'm just tired yeah. you know but it, it was, it feels like it was pulled from this urge to, you know, like following a draft or, you know, go, going out in nature and, and you know, just kind of returning. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, I hope that's helpful to you. It is, yeah. Okay. Was she just, it was kind of this wandering, a wandering for her. Yeah. yeah. What a sweetie. Your other guy, did, mm -hmm. did he have kidney problems or something? He did at the very end, yeah. 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 His values were fine one month and then they were terrible the next. Yeah. Because yeah. he's like, well, if we're talking about passing away, let me just chime in. <laughs> <laughs> he's with, so funny. With, with, something, with something there. Gosh, I want to see him like... With a bow tie. He reminds me of like Felix the cat or top cat or something like that. I, where he's just... Yes. I put bow ties on him for holidays and I have pictures of him with bow ties up on my walls. And he was just, he was a handsome, handsome little guy. So, and he, li he liked uh -huh. wearing them. I just, yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. That's so funny. He's showing me the bow ties. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh Yay. my goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's get back to the humans. Yes. What? Who, who, who are you? <laughs> well, who you know, you so, to? yeah, so I've always been curious um, about, so really about my namesake. I was named after this person who passed long before I was born. And I'm just curious, you know, if she's, if she wants to come through with anything. Okay. Okay. All right. I got it. What I need to do is I got us shut off my analytical brain because my mm -hmm. analytical brain wants to kick in and like fill in the blanks and it's like mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Let me see. Um, did either of you did did your mother know her? Mm -hmm. Um, if I okay. The impressions I'm getting. She's coming through with a lot of. It feels like being fanciful, but it's almost like maybe she had ideals that were. It, it's almost like she's she's living up here instead of on the earth. Does that make sense, Liz? Can you kind of connect that just a little bit? I just want to know if I'm on the right track here. Can you just explain that just a little bit? Okay. There seems to be a little bit of, it almost feels like faith. She had a lot of faith. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she was a devout person, yes. um, but it, it feels like it's bigger than her. And that when, when she was walking around on this earth, she was connected to something bigger than her. Yes, probably. She was a very generous person to other people. Okay. And she was a teacher for many years. Okay. And it feels like she helped heal people too. Mm -hmm. um, like a little bit of, um, like she would have been a great nurse, I think. Mm -hmm. um, because is it fair to say, like, she made people just feel better? Yeah. Yeah, she Absolutely. made their lives a little easier. Yeah. Uh -huh. that was definitely. She she would make soup and take it for her students that, you know, didn't weren't able to bring lunches to school. And, yeah. And I think you told the story of how she, like, brought socks for oh, kids yeah. who needed socks. And, and mittens. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, she was just dialed in, um, with the compassion and this greater understanding of that we're all here and we all should care for each other. And the smallest thing is the biggest thing. Yes. Yes. I don't know if this is too much of a stretch, but she's talking about her father and I don't know if you knew her father. No, I did. Okay. She is talking about him in the way that he was full of love and emotion. And she kind of learned it from him that the more you give, the more it feels <laughs> amazing. And mm -hmm. that it's important to just let your cup overflow and, and, and give. And because you're never going to be depleted when when it comes to love, we don't divide up love. We multiply it is what she's saying. And she kind of learned that from her father. And in a way, um, she loved honoring him. And yeah. That's what she's saying. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Let's all learn. <laughs> Let's all learn from Margaret that yeah, love <laughs> doesn't divide; it, it it multiplies, and that I do love that statement. That is lighting me up inside a little yeah. bit too. Amazing. Okay, well, thank you so much, both of you, Liz and Margaret, yeah. for for meeting with me today. You you just both have such great energy, and. Oh, and I immediately God. just recognized it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I believe I, I said that your last reading where it was just like, I feel like we're fast friends, you know, and yeah. I just yeah. really appreciate it. And yeah, so it's thank been an absolute you. pleasure both times. So thank you for doing this. Oh, you are so very welcome. Yeah. Um, before we go, do you happen to have a personal ghost story that you'd like to share? Oh, that's right. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> listener ghost story okay so the first well the only real moment i feel like um you know actually i had a, a ghost near me right and it was an interaction was um when i moved into my condo which was built in the 80s right um but um i have a sliding door that opens up onto my deck um in my bedroom 
and I moved from the city into the suburbs. And so that felt so good to just leave the sliding door open every single night. And it felt like I was camping, all that fresh air and the, and the birds and the trees and, you know, the, yeah, the owls hooting every night. It was just so beautiful. And two weeks in, um, I was fast asleep. I was so comfortable, that deep, deep slumber you're in. Um, and, uh, and I heard um, a man whisper, hey, like, I don't know if you can hear that, but he just whispered, hey, through the, through, it was either the door or the window next to me. And I felt Francis, the, the kitty you keyed into earlier, he was with me at the time. And I felt him instantly raise his head. He woke up immediately and looked, I was just watching him, but he was looking between the door and the window and he kept looking between the door and the window. So he couldn't identify flesh and blood, you know? And so, and then I heard another, hey, through the door. And I just watched Francis and he could not identify anyone or anything. And I just closed my eyes and went back to sleep. And then the next morning I just woke up and I was like, yep, noted, okay. You know, I heard a guy out on my deck and I'm up on the second floor and no one can get up here. Um, you know, it was just, it was really interesting. And I learned um, literally the next day, um, I was meeting a neighbor and she told me about how um, a really, a really nice gentleman used to live in my unit and he took his own life several years ago outside. And I just kind of, yeah, I was kind of like, okay, you know, and I may be totally assuming, but it kind of felt to me like, um, you know, it might be him because the way he said, hey, it was very gentle. It was like someone just waking you up from a nap. It wasn't really mm -hmm. intrusive. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I think like a, about a week later, I just said out loud to the air, you know, out on the deck, really. I was just like, hey, if you're here, cool, do not wake me up at night, you know, and, and I haven't heard anything since. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good for you setting those rules. I don't like to be woken up at night either. <laughs> no. Yeah, that was an, that was an odd one because, you know, I think if if my cat had seen something, if I could tell he had seen someone, then I would have shot up and looked outside and called 911 with whatever mm -hmm. I saw, but he didn't see anyone, so therefore I wasn't going to check. <laughs> yeah. 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 But obviously reacted, heard it. Yeah, he heard it before I did, actually. He shot up before I opened my eyes. Ah, oh, so. so interesting. So it interesting. really is. It really is. And then can I tell you, like, a quick one about um, a really cool sign that I got? Absolutely. Yeah, and I know, so, you know, sign stories are just, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of them. But this one I really like. Um, I So before I moved into my condo, um, I was living in an apartment building, um, an old, it used to be one of those like 1920s boutique hotel buildings, you know, and so it was a really, really cool unit that I was living in and I lived there for nearly five years. And I, so I was there during COVID and, you know, lockdown and all of this. And, you know, I really, um, I really grew to feel like really attached to this space. Um, I just loved it and I felt really bad for um, moving away from it. I was planning on moving and I felt bad. I, I felt like I was like ditching it or leaving it behind to rot or not be taken care of. And so I just asked for a sign, you know, you know, asking, is it okay if I, if I move, if I leave here, is this place going to be okay? And, um, and I went grocery shopping the next day and I came home and I have one of those, I actually got it from Liz over here, I actually inherited mm -hmm. it from her. It's one of those um, large like soda jars, right? Like it's a very large glass yeah, jar, a root beer jar they call it, that it weighs about 20 pounds, 25 pounds. And I had it sitting on the floor right next to my bed with like fairy lights in it. And the fairy lights had been dead for a year and a half, maybe two years, dusty battery package and all of that. I walk in the door and of course it's brightly lit up in the jar. Wow. And Francis was sitting right next to it on the pillow, <laughs> which I thought was interesting too. But wow. I remember just going, what, who, who turned this on and how did this turn on? And I just let it, I just let it, um, be on the rest of the day. And when I went to bed at night, I went to, flick it off and it turned right off and I tried to flick it on again and never did again. Wow. Yeah. And I just said, thank you. And that really, you know, it's just this is a very, very sweet way 
of yeah. a very warm way of saying, yeah, it's okay if you go. Yeah. That's how I interpreted oh. it. Yeah. That is a lovely sign. Definitely. Yeah, thought so. And, and I've, when we, we talk about signs, I know so many people who are like, oh, what does this mean? And they want some external um, mm -hmm. interpretation for them. But like, you knew. And yeah. I, I believe anyone who really gets a sign, they know. You yes. know. Yeah. Uh, you know the underlying feeling. You you know. We just know. And so you don't need that external confirmation or read it in a book. What what does it mean when the lights turn on? You know, it's going to be right. different and personal for everyone. And, exactly. And that's just, yeah, that's just lovely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. I love both those stories. Thank but, you for sharing yeah, with me. <laughs> you get some really interesting and, stories on the show. So, <laughs> so I was I like, do. oh, God, he's going to, you know, be up to snuff. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I love the variety. You know, I, I just really do. And everyone's individual accounts, they, they all matter and they're all fascinating because we can't explain them. And it makes life wondrous and spooky sometimes. And, and also, but there's more than just the material world. What you see is what you get. You know, there's just more to that. And every story illustrates that. And that's another reason why I love them so much. Yeah. Me too. Awesome. Well, thanks again. This has been delightful. And um, yeah, I, I appreciate you and your mom so much. And please know that your family is so connected to you and they, they come through just, yeah, it's, um, I wish I could give you what I feel and like stick it in your heart, <laughs> you know, and just, yeah. and, and let you, and let you keep it. And, um, but hopefully, you know, you know, you know, yeah. and yeah. 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 Thank well, you. yes. Thank you so much. Absolute delight. Like I said, thank oh, you. Thank you. Would you like a free spirit reading with me and record your reading for the podcast? Sign up for your chance to be selected by visiting italktoghost.com slash guest. And as an added bonus, if you don't want to leave your reading up to chance, I'll let you in on a secret. There's a discount offer to book a private session with me, so you can book a date and time for certain. Visit italktoghost.com slash guest for more details. Hello and welcome back to I Talk to Ghosts. I have a message from the spirits this evening. So thank you for joining me in the candlelight. As I work, I have with me Howlite. Howlite is a lovely, creamy white stone that is said to have the spiritual properties of being able to take negative energy and transmute it into something more calm and clear and soothing. It helps smooth out communications and it is said to help soothe and calm anxiety. So keep Howlite around if you are interested in transmuting negative vibrations into more positive, calming ones. If you're familiar with this podcast and this segment, at this time I open the space, clear my mind, and allow a spirit to come close for someone listening to the podcast. The spirit I have with me tonight is describing himself as a very loving husband when I work, I feel it as if it's coming in through my own emotions and it feels like it's a certain sense of personality. Also, sometimes I see visuals in my head, little snippets of life. And what he's sharing with me is that he was a self-described workaholic He's giving this sense of drive and anxiety focus to it. He's showing me he's showing me that he often ate lunch in his car on the way to and from work or meetings that he was going to. 
there's some humor behind that, that there were always wrappers or containers or something in his car that needed to be cleaned up. He's also sharing with me that he just didn't sleep much. Just a very active mind. Given the opportunity, he really wants to express how much he loves you. He's showing me, I'm seeing that the two of you would eat dinner together when possible outside in the backyard. You had a patio table out there. And this is where the two of you would have the opportunity to really connect soul to soul. His message for you tonight is he thinks you're magic. He thinks you could do anything. He sees you juggling, trying to handle everything on your own now, and he wants to lend you this sense of expansion that you are able to do it. Perhaps give everything a good look and evaluation. The things that do stress you out, are they really stressors or is this a habit that you've put on yourself? I hope this makes sense. Sometimes we stress about things that other people might not. And so we can kind of look at it and say, okay, is this a mindset adjustment? Can I look forward to some of the tasks I do? I keep hearing him call you baby. Every time I say something, I want to call you baby. Um, Just know that his message for you is, I love you, baby. And he is always with you, always with you. If these details make sense to you and this message resonates for you, I hope it brings a lot of comfort and healing as you go forward and know that he is always with you and he loves you. Thank you. Spooky season is upon us. Listen to I Talk to Ghosts for an atmospheric chill and to never feel alone, knowing the spirits are always around you. The autumn months are the perfect time to share and recommend this podcast to your ghoulish friends. Thank you for supporting the podcast and sharing the spooky. Welcome back. I promised you that I would mention a few times in life where I personally have witnessed objects moving in a poltergeist-like way. Now, in episode 13, I did describe some objects in my house that have appeared out of nowhere. There was a knife in my couch that no one in the household recognized as part of our kitchenware. And there was also an instance that I shared with you of a tube of porcelain repair disappearing and reappearing and disappearing. And as a small update, it still has never reappeared. Maybe this year, maybe this spooky season. So some poltergeist-like activity that has happened in my current space in the house that I am in now. Uh, There was one instance where uh, a plug came shooting out of the wall and landed about a couple of feet away from the outlet. And this is, of course, a plug and an outlet that we've used for years And there were no sparks or sound at the time. Uh, There wasn't anything strange that you could physically explain as to why this happened. It just popped out of the wall and ended up a couple feet away. Hasn't happened since. But the one event that did happen in the house that was quite startling and I still can't explain, was we were up in our entertainment room. We were sitting there watching TV, Buffy the Vampire Slayer on Blu-ray, by the way, and there were a few things on the entertainment center um, shelf underneath the TV, and one of those things was a game figure. It was about four inches tall, not like teeny teeny, but you know, not huge either. 
while we were watching TV, this figure starts to spin. And while it was spinning, it was also rotating on its axis. Then it slowly wound down, wobbled to a stop, still standing. It didn't fall over. This is a motion that I couldn't possibly replicate. I can't make this thing move that way. There wasn't a window open, nothing else on the shelf was moving that was very close to this object. There was no one nearby who could have possibly bumped it. And we just sat there, kind of stunned, looking at it, looking at each other, saying, did you see that? Oh my gosh, what what happened? And then at that point, we just kind of shrugged and kept watching our episode of Buffy. (laughs) With all of the things that have happened in this house, with the disappearing and reappearing objects, the things moving on their own, I really do truly expect in the back of my mind that this will happen again. And when it does, I will let you know. And with that, dear listener, we've reached the end of this episode of I Talk to Ghosts. I hope you've enjoyed my spirit work that I shared with you this evening, as well as those ghost stories of poltergeists. Have you experienced poltergeist activity in your life? Oh my gosh, I would love to hear the details. I would love to hear your story. So please reach out. In the meantime, wherever you wander off to in this world or the next, just remember, Come back and visit with me. Have a lovely evening and good night.